What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Deborah YouTube channel. We are back with another 2024 rookie mock draft. And you guys know the deal. On these mock drafts, what I try to do is give you player values for picks as well. So it's not just, hey, here's Caleb Williams. We know that. But we're going to be diving into what the picks are worth. And then what I did is I went on and I looked at what actual trades are out there right now this week. So you're watching this when this premieres of the week of. These are trades from Fantasy Calc that shows exactly what's going on in your Dynasty Leagues, how it can be actionable for you if you do want to move a pick. Or maybe you see some areas where you can unload some of these veterans for picks and you like what these mock drafts show you. So we're going to be diving into the mock draft. It is a industry slash kind of like just Debbie degenerate draft for guys that I do know, know what they're doing here. So we're going to look at kind of this. We have a new guy in the top five. So we're going to be diving into that after the intro. All right, give me a little foreshadow who maybe be in that top five there with Trey Benson on the thumbnail. But let's dive into the 101. No, you know, no shock here. It's Caleb Williams. We, we've talked about this multiple times. Caleb's going to go 101 at Superflex drafts pretty much for the remainder of the year. I will say there are some people out there that think Drake May can be QB1. Um, so I just wanted to note that. But Caleb Williams, 101, lock it down. Then we, then we have Marvin Harrison Jr. at 102. And I think pretty much, you know, those guys, you're, you know, you're getting those two guys at the 101 and the 102. Marvin's been a great, great, you know, receiver at Ohio State. He's, he's in line for another year. I think realistically, if, if they have a great year this year, I think he, he's going to be invited down to the Heisman ceremony. That's how good Marvin Harrison Jr. is. Coming in at three is Drake May. And there's your top three. Really, that's really the echelon of the class. If you're trading for a pick in that top area, you want the 101 through 103 because there's going to be a ton of value there. And there is a little bit of drop off at the 104 right now. Obviously, things change as we get into the season. Uh, but those are your top three picks. Now, after that, we got Travion Henderson, who, again, the last mock that we did went at the 1-9, 110, somewhere in there. So you see the disparity in the level of like talent, and it really just depends on who is drafting with you. Like it just really goes into this is why if you do do Debbie or anything like that, it's you guys know it's it's so it's volatile and it changes so much just because of you know, who's in the league. They might like Travion, they're running back one. They'll take him at 104, whereas other guys will be hesitant there. Now, there is a new guy at 105. Trey Benson comes in the first round. First time I've seen him in the top five, but he's getting buzz out there, y'all. You know, Christian Williams had him here at the channel in November as a top three back. Then, it, you know, consensus caught up, and we see Trey Benson there. PFF just put out a graphic saying he's the running back one in college football of the draft eligible guys. So again, when you're looking at that, Trey's getting up there. So now we have him in the top five. So you're, you're, you know, we were getting him in. I think I drafted him in the fourth round of a Debbie draft early on in this off season. That is gone. Now here's an idea though. If you do have him in Debbie, you can move him, right? Like these are where those value plays. If you want to go get an elite NFL guy, those are the type of value play that you can do. Um, so just keep, be aware of where he's getting valued right now. So valued right now in the 24 classes, running back two. some people have him as running back one. 106, Emeka Ibuka, probably one of the safest wide receiver prospects in Debbie or in college football right now. He's borderline, probably going to be a round one, early round two guy. People are very comfortable drafting him here. 107, Raheem Sanders. Again, 1,400 yards last year in the SEC, 271 yards receiving, going to have that volume again in Arkansas. Uh, there's questions and concerns about his athleticism, but this is a very, very good spot for him. The 108 is Brock Bowers, tied in Georgia. Really just depends. You're taking him early or you know through the first round. He's a consensus first round pick here. 109 is Malik Neighbors. So we've seen him kind of consistently be around that 109 and 112 mark for the last couple of months. So just from a value perspective, you should understand that now. Braylon Allen gets in the 110. I will say this is earlier than I'm used to with Allen. Um, Allen at, at times goes at the 203 or 204 now. He's been a consensus second round pick. But again, this is where it comes into play with some guys that just like Allen will draft him there. 111, Xavier Worthy, who I think could have a better year this year, won't be injured, will be able to catch the football this year. I think as a breakout year with Quinn Ewers, could be very good in that Texas offense. I think 111, it, we could see him going at 111 next year in real rookie drafts. And in the 112 is Quinn Ewers. He really rounds out this. Quinn Ewers is the ultimate boom bust. You're taking him here. You're hoping he hits. You can get that value back or, you know, he's going to be a first round draft pick. 
I don't hate this in terms of where the value was and then we're going to talk about what comes next. Now, as far as trade, so I want to show you guys this. Here are some deals out there. Now, these are all deals in 12 teams, Superflex, PPR, right? Full PPR, just to give you guys context there. Miles Sanders in a first for Drake London. I will say there is a buy opportunity right now for Drake London, what we're seeing. Okay. And now this really depends. Like Miles could be a solid running back too. If this is an early first, maybe you take a shot to try to go get Caleb or, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. in those places. Uh, but if this is a late first, I really like that for London, right? So it really just depends on where that first is. But that's a good point of going through the first round so you could see where maybe the value is at. And then, you, okay, I'm going to move him for this. 2024 first for Aaron Rodgers. Again, super flex. I think Aaron Rodgers, this is the last time you're going to be able to move Rodgers for probably that first. I have a hard time seeing, even if he's playing very well in that quarterback 10 to 14 range, him going for any more because people are just going to think he's going to retire. So if you have Rodgers on a rebuilding or retooling roster and you want to take a shot on that first, this might be the last opportunity as we get into the season, right? 24 first for Joe Mixon. This is the last opportunity to probably get a first for Mixon. I don't know how many deals out there can do this. I will say Mixon comes into a pretty solid role. He took a pay cut. Looks like he's going to be there for two years in that offense. He had a career high in targets last year and catches. And when you see Samaj P. Ryan gone, there's an opportunity for Mixon to kind of have that ability. So he might be a fun buy low. I don't know if I'd send a first for him, but if I have a second and I'm out there and, and I think Mixon can go for an early second, mid second, I would do that deal for Mixon. And then Jordan Love at a first for Justin Fields. I don't, this is, a, again, these are all real trades. This is a trade that went down. This is a big Jordan Love believer. Maybe you can send a first in love for Fields. You might get laughed out, but you never know until you send that baby. And, and maybe you can go get Justin Fields for this type of price. I would be totally okay with Justin Fields for you'd love it at first. Now, in the second round, just to kind of go through all picks, Troy Franklin. Donovan Edwards, I think, is getting slept on. I really feel like if he comes out this year, he's going to be a late first in rookie drafts next year. Ja'Cory Brooks is the one that's tough. In the last mock we did, he didn't get drafted in three rounds. Here he goes at the 203. Uh, J. Michael Sturdivant, he was on Brugler's list when we were talking about the athletic of early. He's wide receiver five. We've talked about him here for two years. If you've been following us, you know you got value with J. Michael Sturdivant because he was not getting drafted until we saw that list come out. Michael Penix Jr., Jalen McMillan, two Washington kids there. Then Roman Dunze at 208. It is interesting that McMillan and Dunze got flipped there. 207 is Will Shipley, J.J. McCarthy, Jace McClellan, Bucky Irving, and Devin Neal wrap out the top. Just, you know, I think the question marks of the quarterbacks, where's, you know, Phoenix and J.J. McCarthy going? I think J.J. is really good. I think J.J. can really step up. I was listening to the Cover 3 podcast talking about J.J., and they love its new quarterback coach and the ability to kind of work on his mechanics. If he gets that down and there's optimism that he does, J.J. could have a huge year this year. So be on a lookout for J.J. this season. Now, as far as 24 second trades, I tried to find some for just straight ups to kind of give you guys player values. 24 second for Dallas Goddard, non tight end premium. So, just, you know, generally speaking, if you believe in Goddard, you have a second, you need a tight end. Could be a good target out there. 24 second for Chark, DJ Chark getting second. So, if you want to get off the Chark train, you can't stay healthy, you don't believe he's going to be that good in, in Carolina, maybe you could get a 24 second for him out there. Float him out there if you want to. I like Chark. I do think he, he, can be a guy in that offense because I think he's the only one with his skill set. And I think Bryce is going to like Chark. Uh, so I, I have him as a kind of a deep buy, but I wouldn't give up a second for him. I, I'm, I'm comfortable more at the third level. Austin Eckler in a second for Dak Prescott and Superflex. So again, if you need a Superflex quarterback, getting off on Eckler, that contract situation. <clears throat> Getting older, 27 years old, and a second for Dak. I think Dak remains one of the most underrated quarterback assets in the format. And in a second for A.J. Dillon. Dillon, you're just, you you know, I don't want to say hoping for an Aaron Jones injury, but if you have him, you're hoping Aaron Jones doesn't finish the season so that Dillon can kind of step in and get that volume. But until then, it's capped. If you want to kind of reload at that position and take a second for him, that's essentially what you're doing. You're kind of re-rolling and just saying, hey, if I can go get that early second, like in the running back range, like what we saw this year with Ty J. Spears, Kendra Miller in that era, that's what you're doing with that one. And in the last round here, Jarquez Hunter, the Auburn running back, who I think is going to be a value. I understand that's going on with off the field, but it does seem like he's going to play this year. Blake Quorum's jumping in there at 302. 
Bo Nix, Jatavian Sanders, Dorian Singer from USC. Antoine Wells is a new addition to this mock draft that we do. Uh, you know, young wide receiver. I wouldn't say young, but, you know, senior wide receiver of South Carolina. He is getting a little bit buzz out there. Very athletic and he's very, very strong prospect for a sleeper right now. Bryson Nesbitt from North Carolina. Then we have Ronda Gadsden. Riley Leonard, Jojo Earl, Kyle McCord, and Dante Thornton. I will say the biggest value in this Kyle McCord because if the Ohio State quarterback starts this year and they win 10 or 11 games, Kyle McCord is going to get draft buzz. You get him in the third round of Superflex draft, he's going to go for more than that, right? It is a risk, but Ohio State, they, they produce these type of quarterbacks that we see with that draft capital. Now, as far as thirds right now, what are they going for? A third for Michael Thomas. So if you want to kick the tiles in Michael Thomas, you think Michael Thomas has one last good in the year with Derek Carr in that offense. A third is not a bad asking price. Rashad Bateman, a third for Tyler Lockett. You know, Rashad, he just can't stay healthy, right? There's some question marks about that. But if you have Tyler Lockett and you're kind of retooling or rebuilding, and you can get a third for and Bateman for Lockett, not a bad move in my opinion, because if you have Lockett right now, his age cliff has already passed. People do believe him in this year, but JSN being there, it's hard to imagine him on this roster next year. This might be the chance to move off of Lockett. Brandon Cooks in a third for Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook's value is all over the place. We just saw it. And then this happened after the allegations um, with him and his ex. So that is, again, just to kind of give you context of what his value looks like after that incident, where he's going to go, where he's going to land. Then we have Roshan Johnson at third from Michael Gallup and Brian Robinson. So if you believe in Roshan, you make them this deal. But I do think Michael Gallup's going to come out and have a pretty good year down there for Dallas. Brian Robinson's kind of a throw in for the third. So it really just depends on what you think the best asset in that deal is. For me, it's Michael Gallup with Roshan kind of right there. But I do understand maybe grabbing Roshan and kind of rolling with him. All right, that was our mock draft. We appreciate everybody that drafted with us the 2024 mock. I hope these trades help you. The whole idea of this is giving you those trade ideas so that you can see them and then you can garner that, that value. So comment below. Let us know what you think. Let me know what you think. I will always dive in here and ask. I will always answer trade questions. You can find me on Twitter there. I uh, haven't been on active as much, but you can get there or just in the comments, man. Drop them in there. I will be here to help you guys with your dynasty kind of questions and your trade needs. So appreciate you guys. We'll check you guys on the next one.